Keep going. So, re reviewing of important uh, poses in, in yoga and um, doing other things that help prepare our body for yoga. Today we're going to definitely be doing some balancing. So, it's always helpful. It can be helpful to have either a chair, I'll pull out my chair in a second, to just rest your hand on or be near something that you can feel a little stability, okay? But we always start our practices finding our grounding, okay? So we're going to take the feet hip width distance and if you put your hands on your hip bones right here, and point your fingers to your feet. If you look down, if your feet are under your fingers, you're hip width distance. If your fingers are pointing and your feet are wider, you're uh, wider than hip width distance. So that's the main thing. A lot of people think hip width distance is here, but it's actually usually a little narrower than you think. So let's ground through the feet, connect to the earth. All right, we wanna make sure all four corners of the feet are in contact with the earth. So we think about the big toe mounds, we press them in. We think about the outer heels, we connect those to the earth, inner heels. Little toe mounds, now lift all 10 toes, spread them out and bring them down. So we've got a really strong base of support now and we draw energy up through the legs Thinking about lining the hips up with the uh, ankles here. And then think about your shoulders because, a lot, you know, we spend a lot of our day kind of like this. We want to roll the shoulders and bring them in line with the hips, which are in line with the ankles. Now, where's your head? Ears over shoulders. And then when we have the hands down by our side with the palms face forward, that gives lots of space now for the breath. And breathing, we breathe through the nose. It filters and moisturizes the inhale. And most of the time we breathe out through the nose. But sometimes when you just really want to let go, in through the nose and whew, out through the mouth. So let's go ahead and just move around for a moment. And play with in through the nose and out through the nose, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Especially in the summertime sometimes when you are um, feeling heated, you know, you start to feel really warm. A nice exhale through the mouth in your yoga practice can help cool you down a bit. All right, so let's come back into this, our mountain pose. We're breathing in through the nose, and most typically out through the nose. Okay, so now we're, we have our feet grounded, right? We're going to keep them grounded as we start to draw the arms up, okay? So when you're drawing your arms up, start to draw them up and stay conscious of what your shoulders are doing. A lot of times the shoulders wanna come up. Keep the shoulders down, draw your arms up, and maybe your shoulders are saying, hey, that's far enough, I, you know, it's, go, it, it's going to bother me to go higher. You just stop here. If your shoulders are okay going higher, you keep going. In this case, we'll bring our palms to touch. And then as we exhale, we'll bring our hands to our heart. Okay, so let's do that again. Being mindful of the shoulders, not creeping up toward the ears. As far up or not as the arms want to go, and then exhale. Yeah. All right, one more time. Just think about everything. Inhale. Exhale. And then come back to standing. And always, you know, when you feel like it, shake it out. That's always fine to do. Okay? So now we're going to move into our spinal series. So the spine moves in six ways. These movements are going to help it. So the feet are maybe slightly wider than hip width distance now, just for a little extra stability. Hands on the thighs. So to do cats and cows standing, 
You can arch your back, shine your heart forward. Be careful not to throw the head back and round the spine, gaze towards your left. Now it's also useful to think about how to do them in a chair because even if you're not in a yoga class, sometimes you'll just be sitting and you want to release your spine. Same thing, just put your hands above your knees, arch and round. Whenever you're sitting, you're going to sit toward the edge of your chair and your feet are grounded. Just as though you were still standing. And the next time you're rounded forward, just go ahead and roll your hands up your legs and come back to mountain pose. So we're going to put the feet hip width distance, whether we're seated or standing, and the spine is long. Okay? So seated mountain pose or standing mountain pose. Forward and back with the spine. That's a great equalizer. Do that at least every day, several times every day. Now we're going to take the spine side to side. Okay, so you can do this either seated or standing. If you're seated, you want to make sure that your hips stay connected to your chair. We're going to take the right arm up. If you're standing, your feet stay connected to the earth. Tilt over to the left. And then come up and switch sides. Tilt to the right. Okay, so either way. And we start gentle, right? Give the spine a chance to figure out, oh yeah, I'm tilting, I'm waking up. And then as you move, you can go, uh-huh. You can go a little deeper, okay? All right, and then we're gonna go back to the left and stay there, okay? And from here, we're going to float the left arm up. So the arms are parallel. You might have felt a little more work starting to happen in your core when you did that. Okay. And let's bring it up. Take the right arm down. Tilt to the left. Float the right arm up. So your core is very engaged. Bring it up. And oof, let's just let go of all this. So whether you're standing or seated, let it go. All right, bring it to straight. Okay, so we are going to now start to do some twisting. All right, so let's start out with the standing twist, feet are grounded, okay? Inhale the arms up, exhale, extend your arms to the, and take your right arm back, left arm forward. Inhale, center, left arm back, right arm forward. And just keep doing that. Remember, we start little and we get bigger as we go. Same thing in the chair. The hips are staying grounded here. All right, now if you're standing, you're just going to go ahead and bring your uh, left arm in front, your right arm behind, and twist. Seated, same thing. And then bring the arms up, and bring your right arm in front, left arm behind, and twist from here. Turn your gaze towards your left shoulder. Bring it up. Inhale, whew, exhale, shake it out. All right, so that was our spinal series, taking the spine in six directions, okay? Now we're going to be coming into downward facing dog. It's two, two hands, two feet, inverted V. We'll be winding up here. Now, this can also be done with your hands on the seat of your chair, okay? It could also be done with your hands on a countertop. So maybe you're walking through your kitchen and you see the countertop and you say, oh, let's do a down dog. But to get to down dog from standing, we're, uh, we need to do forward folding. So we're going to do it in the chair or from mountain pose. All right, so let's review forward fold. Those feet are grounded again. The arms come up. Remember, shoulders away from the ears. Inhale. Now... We fold right from the hip creases. As a matter of fact, you could just put your index fingers in your hip creases for now. 
start to fold. Maybe you want to keep your head higher than your heart, that's fine. Maybe you want to go halfway, that's fine. If you're going deeper, start walking your hands down your legs. You're in a forward fold. In your chair, you've extended your legs and you're still keeping your spine long, folding from the hip creases. And then let's go ahead and walk the hands back up from forward fold. Okay, and we're gonna take it down again. So in a chair, extend your legs, arms up, inhale. Everybody fold over those hip creases, float it down. You can float all the way down or you can walk your hands down your legs. Now we're going to bend the knees and hips. If you're seated, just stay where you are. Put your hands on your thighs, shine your heart forward, half lift. Now continue bending, bring your fingertips down and walk your feet back. You're in downward facing dog. So if you're on the chair, you wanna stand up, put your hands on the chair and walk back to downward facing dog. And once you get into dog, you're going to bend one knee and then the other, giving those feet a nice massage. So that brings a lot of energy to the body and it liberates the toes, which are real, is really helpful. Press one heel down and hold. Switch, press the other heel down and hold. Press both heels down and hold. And then go ahead and bring your knees down. If you're using the chair, just come back to seated. Okay, knees down, sit off to the side. We're going to find seated mountain pose with the feet flexed, spine long. All right, so from a nice long spine here, seated mountain pose. So the feet are flexed as though you were still standing on the earth and you know how to do seated mountain pose in the chair. Your hips are grounded here, okay? So now we're going to take the palms out, inhale up, be mindful of those shoulders, and this time turn your palms out and as you exhale, your palms face down, your fingertips start floating toward the mat. Tap. All right, let's inhale again. Arms up. Now pretend there's a feather on the top of your head. As you bring your arms down, press the crown of your head into that feather so your spine keeps lengthening even as your fingertips come down. Good, and then shake everything out. All right, so we went over um, down dog. We'll do another down dog pretty soon. We're going to do some core work now. So the core, a lot of what we do in yoga uses the core, but this is dedicated core work that we're going to do uh, right now. So just go ahead and bend your knees. Your feet are hip width distance apart and the feet are grounded here, okay? So um, take your arms forward and lean back and up. Now in, in the chair, okay, you guys keep doing that if you're on the mat. If you're in the chair, hips are at the edge here, back and up. Same thing, back and up. Now we're going to add arms to this. So come on up, take a little break. Okay, bring your hands to your heart right here. Lean back, take your right arm out. Notice what your core does when you move that right arm and in. Take your left arm out and in. Now try both arms out and in and sit up. Okay, it's no different in the chair. We're leaning back, long spine. There's no curve in the spine. The spine is long, hands are at your heart. We're gonna start on the left this time. Left arm out and in. Right arm out and in. Both arms out and in and up. 
All right, we're going to go through that another time, and you can do it without a break. If you're, you know, if you've been working your core and you want to continue without a break, just go, we'll just keep going right, left, double, right, left, double. Arm is long, arms are long, I mean spine is long, huh. hands are to the heart, take it back, right, left, we don't want to go fast, we want to feel this, double, come up if you want, or continue, left, right, double, come up if you want, or right, left, double, come up if you want, or left, right, double, and let's all come up for a second, take a breath. So when you're doing this, just keep going. If you're loving it, I see you. When you're doing this, you want to make sure your spine is long, your core stays engaged. The only thing really moving here is your arms. All right, everybody shake it out for a moment. We're going to add a little challenge to that, okay? Again, it's the same thing if you're in the chair as on, on the mat. Bend, bend your knees, long spine, hands to the heart. Take your right arm out, take your right leg up. Whoa, there it is, bring it down. Left arm out, left leg up. Remember, this is an option. Okay, two arms out. Some of you might want to start to lift the feet and bring it in and up, okay? All right, here we go. We're going to start on the left this time. Left arm, left leg, and in. Right arm, right leg, and in. Two arms, no legs, or two legs if you want to try, and release, shake it out. It's actually easier to raise both legs on the floor than it is in the chair. So uh, don't be surprised if that was your experience with the two legs, right? All right, let's wiggle those legs out. Who's feeling their core so far? Yeah, a little bit, a lot. Okay, we're gonna, that was a lot right here. We're going to work the side abs, the obliques, all right? So go ahead, bend your knees, hands to your heart. Okay, we're leaning back. This time we rotate as we twist to the right. Remember we did this at the beginning of class? We were twisting and come up, left arm back and up. We're just going to keep going right and left, right and left. Now if you want to add leg, right arm, right leg, left arm, left leg. That's what it looks like in the chair. This is what it looks like on the mat. Anytime you need to take a break, which if you start to lose your form, definitely take a break and come back strong. Don't keep going when you feel like your uh, form has suffered. And you don't have to raise the leg, you can if you want. And we're going to finish up here on the left because we started on the right. And bring it in, shake everything out. Whew, all right. Now we get to some really fun stuff, which is our water wheel to release the hips. Okay, have we done this before in this class, water wheel? Yes, I'm getting a yes. This is much easier laying on the mat. So if possible, come to your mat. Yeah. And this is a great thing to do for your hips. You can do this every day. The basic water wheel. Take this down. Okay. All right. So with your hands by your side, knees bent, two feet on the mat, bring your right knee in. Take your right leg up, point the toe, flex your right foot, Bring it down, knee in, point up, flex down. Be mindful of your back, where that'll tell you how low to drop your foot. So bring it in, hold here for a second, point up, 
flex your foot. Now, as you come down, just notice, is your spine, is your back still happy? Maybe your leg needs to stop halfway. Maybe it goes farther. And let's do two more circles. And then hold your right knee in. Now we're going to reverse the water wheel. So flex your right foot. Wherever you stopped before, whether it was halfway or lower, press out to there. Now draw your leg up and knee in. Flex out, point up, knee in. Is this making sense? If you're not happy doing it on the mat, okay? This is what I would suggest for the chair. Put your hands on the chair and rotate like this instead of trying to do it from seated. Will that work? Yeah, if you're not happy down on the floor, do it standing. All right, you guys hold that right knee in, okay? And just put your hand on your hamstring, let the right knee come out and back. You can do that from standing too, we're just opening and closing the leg a little bit and have a, uh, put the foot down, and do that on the left, okay? So you, uh, if you're on the mat, it's left knee in, point up, flex down. If you're using a chair, your hands are on the back of the chair, knee up, take the leg back, and circle around. Bring your knee up, take the leg back, circle around. We're still getting that same exact movement for the hip. It's a circle. All right, now we're going to pause and reverse. So on the mat, it's leg out, point up, knee in. Standing, it's leg back, forward, and knee in. So we're just reversing the circle. All right, now go ahead and take that left leg. If it didn't work for you standing, then just sit down and take your left leg out and back. Same exact move. If you're on the mat, you're just holding on to your hamstring and taking the leg out to the left and back to center. All right, now two feet to the mat. Sit, up, sit in your chair if you're uh, not on the mat, sit in your chair. Everybody has two feet to the mat. And we're going to let the knees, both knees now, just open and close. Inhale and exhale. So we're going to be um, doing a little pigeon now. So take your right ankle across your left thigh. Make sure your right foot is flexed. Draw your legs in towards you. Hold on, I'll show you seated in a moment. And just move around, okay? In the chair, you're gonna cross your right ankle over your left thigh. If that is too much, then just cross at the ankles, and then we lean forward and move around, okay? So instead of drawing the legs in toward the chest, we draw the chest to the legs. Go one direction and the other, this is our basic pigeon with a lot of movement. Come back to center, unwind. So you have two feet to the mat. And then we, same thing on the left. Left ankle, right? Hold on to your left shin and move around. If you're on the mat, you're bringing your legs closer to your face. Now, if that shin is just too far away, you're on the mat, that shin is just too far away, you can hold a different part of your leg. Okay, remember if you're in the chair, we want to lean forward with a long spine. Our goal here is to loosen up that hip. Okay, come back to center, release, and shake those legs out. All right, we're all going to stand here and work on balance. Okay. So I have a question for you. What is something you do every day that throws you constantly off balance and brings you back to balance? Denise is it? yep, walking, yes. 
So you practice balance every day. So this is nothing new. It's not like a shock to your body, right? Okay, so if you like to have um, a chair nearby, again, it could be a table, the countertop, you could even have your hands on the wall. It's just for a little extra um, stability. It's not to lean on to, all right? So if you're using a chair, you're going to have your right hand on the chair and we'll be working with the outside leg, the left leg, okay? If you don't have a chair, we'll still be working with the left leg primarily. So for balance, we want those feet grounded. Remember what we did at the beginning. We felt into all four corners of the feet. We lifted the toes, spread them out, and brought them back down. So now the feet are very large, okay? And we're just lining everything up. We also want to find a spot that isn't moving and keep our gaze steady. The eyes are very important here. And then the final thing we want to do is release any tension or anxiety that we might have related to the thought of standing on one leg. So take a nice deep inhale and exhale through the mouth. This is a good place to exhale through the mouth. Place your right hand gently on the chair if you're using it, left hand on your hip, or if you're not, both hands on the hip, okay? So we're gonna take the left heel up. Now sometimes when you do that, oop, your right hip juts out. So realign your right legs nice and strong and tall here, okay? We're looking at something that isn't moving and we're gently starting to raise that left knee. Now maybe that uh, left foot taps down and up a few times on its way up. Maybe the knee comes up this much and that's what's comfortable right now. Maybe it comes up to hip height, okay? We're standing on one foot with those toes elevated either a little or the knee in line with the hip and release. All right, shake it out. Okay, now we're going to option add an arm. If you know sun and moon, just go ahead and start working on your sun and moon because that's what we're working on here. Okay, so go work on your sun and moon balance. Okay, the rest of us are going to place the left hand back on the left hip, point the toes, draw the knee up, whether the toes are high or low, right? And make sure we're straight and strong on our right leg and then draw that left arm up. And release. All right, now we're going to switch to the other side. So this time the left hand is gently touching something or not, right? Okay, and we take that right heel up, make sure we adjust the left leg to be straight and strong, gaze is steady, and start to float that right foot up. Maybe it's a half inch from the mat, maybe the knee is in line with the hip, could be anywhere in between. Gentle touch on the chair. Maybe you even take your fingers off the chair for a second, and release. All right, let's do this now. Take that foot, uh, that leg back up to where you had it and add your right arm. And maybe, again, you're comfortable floating the hand off the chair. It's always there for you. Good, and release, shake it out. All right, that's our basic sun and moon, okay. Any thoughts on that? We're going to do that one more time on each side. So we're going to step to the side of the chair. We'll just go through it into it a little smoother this time. We're going to, if you're comfortable, raise your left leg and your left arm. And if you're still comfortable, take the right arm away from the chair. Good, and release. So the more you work on this, 
the more your body is coming into balance more smoothly. All right, so here we go. Right leg, right arm. Again, your toes might only be a half inch off the mat. That's fine. Your knee might be in line with your, and then you might float your arm up. You might come out of balance. That's great. That's learning. And release, shake it out. All right. So go ahead. If um, you have the chair, put your hands on the back of the chair and do a nice long spinal stretch. That's um, if you're on the mat, just go ahead into forward fold. All right, bring your hands to your hips and come up slowly. Okay, if you're on the chair, same thing. Come up, bring your hands to your hips and shake it out. All right, the next uh, balance, it's, it's a strength balance and focus pose. And it doesn't feel that much like a balance pose because we're going to have two feet on the, on the mat at all times. So we're going into warrior two. Yeah, go ahead and finish up what you're doing if you're still working on your sun and moon. We're moving into warrior two. We take the feet very wide. The legs are wide apart, which means some of you might need to turn on your mat so you're not directly facing forward anymore. And that's fine. Okay. All right, if you take your arms out from your shoulders and you drop an imaginary line from your wrist to your ankle, that's where your ankles are. This is what we consider a wide stance. I'll show you using the chair in a minute. Okay, we're gonna turn the right toes to the right, the left toes in at an angle, level off the pelvis, and take the right knee over the right ankle. Usually what happens, we're looking down, we need to bring our shoulders back over our hips. It's the same thing. Using the chair, we might just wanna keep one hand on the chair for balance, okay? And then we take arms out in line with the shoulders, either one arm or two, the front arm in line with the shoulders. This is our warrior two. The balance here is between down and up, not side to side like we were just doing. Okay, so we're nice and stable. We're in this beautiful wide pose here. We feel super grounded from the waist down. From the waist up, we're light and spacious. And we take our gaze past our fingertips, the right fingertips, if you have both arms out, whichever arm is forward, if you have one arm out. And this is where we build focus by breathing in our warrior two. All right, and let's come back and just find a way to get those feet back side by side. We're coming wide again and we're going to do it to the left. Left toes forward, right toes in at an angle. Pelvis is level, left knee bends, it's over the ankle, and it's also tracking through the, the knee is tracking through the center of the foot. Shoulders go back over the hips, arms out, gazing to the left. We are strong and steady in our mountain pose. And then we come back up and give the legs a break. Okay. All right. So we're going to work our way back down to the earth now. Okay. If you're not coming all the way to the mat, you're going to be working your way to, to the chair. So let's go ahead and have the feet hip width distance apart. Find your mountain pose, whether it's seated mountain or standing. Inhale, flip those arms up. You paid attention to where the shoulders were going, right? Exhale into a swan dive. Fold over those hip creases. 
Now bend the knees and hips, do a half lift, shine your heart forward, and continue if you're on the mat, bring your hands down and come into down dog. If you're in the chair, just extend your legs and walk your hands forward. Okay, so if you've come into down dog on the mat, go ahead and bring your knees down and we'll all find seated mountain pose. In the chair, the feet are back under the knees, right? The feet are square. On the mat, the spine is long, it's long in the chair too but the feet are flexed. Inhale and exhale. All right, now we're gonna shake things out and do a couple of gentle forward folds. So just softly gent raise your arms up and exhale, melt forward. Okay. Bring your hands back up, softly bring those arms up and exhale, gently melt forward. and bring it up, inhale and exhale. All right, so from here, we're going to do wind removing pose. It's another nice release for the hips. I'll show it on the mat, then I'll show it on the chair. So come down to your mat, okay? Extend your right leg and two arms overhead, and then draw your right knee in towards your chest. Okay. So in the chair, same thing. Extend your right leg, arms overhead. Draw your right knee in. You could hold your hamstring or your shin. All right, now go ahead and bring the right foot down Extend your left leg, arms overhead, and draw the knee in. And many of you are used to now extending both arms and both legs. That's an option now. I just wanted to show it with the uh, opposite knee staying bent, okay? If you're in the chair, just continue with what we just did. If you're on the mat, you can try extending both arms and both legs, and then bring your right knee in. Well, you could do this in the chair too, it's working. I wasn't sure it would. All right, extend both arms and both legs and bring your left knee in. So that's the half Ardha Apanasana. Now we're going to extend both arms, both legs, and if you're on the mat, draw your knees in towards your chest. Double knees toward the chest doesn't work well in the chair, so just put your hands under your legs and fold forward. If you're in the chair, folding forward, keep your core strong so you're not just falling onto your um, legs. You're here. Inhale and exhale, and then extend everything, arms up, and release. Bring your feet back under, Bend your knees, bring your feet back to the mat, okay? And we're going to bring the legs together and do some windshield wipers. We're at the very edge of the chair. Take the knees side to side. On the mat, your legs are together, your arms are out, and you go side to side. Okay, if the knees side to side in the chair isn't feeling that great, then you're going to get the same kind of movement by taking your arms side to side. It's the same movement for your spine. So we're just going side to side. This is probably better in the chair. All right, if you're doing windshield wipers on the mat, just Take your knees to the right and your gaze to the left. If you're in the chair, just take your arms to one side and stay there. And then we come to the other side and hold there. Knees to the left, gaze right if you're on the mat. And shake everything out. All right, two feet to the mat. Raise one leg in the air. We're going to work that ankle again. 
one leg in the air, one foot down, point and flex your foot, okay? Circle that ankle one direction and the other. Bring that foot down, take your other leg up, point and flex. Circle the ankle one direction and the other. Bring that foot down and let your knees just wave open and close. Little butterfly wings here. Inhale and exhale. All right, we're going to come back to center. The feet hip width distance apart, grounded, arms long out from the shoulders. Okay, your spine could be on the mat or you could be seated. Extend wide through the fingertips and wiggle your fingers into a gentle fist. Extend wide. Feel that energy going all the way up your arm into your shoulder and it's even helping your posture when you do this. Wiggle your fingers into a gentle fist. Extend those arms long and wiggle and then rotate the wrists, those hard working wrists. Let's give them a little attention here. Pause and rotate the other way. Now we're going to drop the hands by our sides here, okay? And take the head just from side to side. And we're looking for a tightness in the neck, just giving it a chance to loosen up a bit. And then come back to center. And now finally, we're going to just scan our own bodies from head to toe and see if anything is saying, hey, move me, realign me, okay? We're going to be moving into our final relaxation position for today. So I'll just quickly show on the chair, you finally get to lean back and let go, right? On the mat, final relaxation, if your spine is happier with your knees bent, you just come with your knees bent. If your spine is happy with your legs straight, you straighten your legs. We align ourselves after taking any final movements that the body seems to be requesting. Okay, and now the most important thing we do in our practice is the spinal relaxation. So whether you're relaxed back in your chair, or you're on the mat, comfortably on the mat, we take a nice deep inhale through the nose. And a nice slow exhale, just let everything go. Bringing the body into a nice peaceful, conscious rest where we have a chance to absorb the benefits of the work we just did. Okay, so we're going to stay here for a couple of minutes, but not do anything. We are just here. So the breath just moves in and out the way it does all day without us consciously uh, affecting it. And we're just in our final relaxation.
slowly begin to bring your awareness back to your space. And allow your breath to deepen. Gently invite movement back to your body. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And on your next inhale, stretch long. Exhaling. If you're on the mat, draw your knees in towards you. If not, just come back up to a nice easy seat here. Okay. On the mat, turn to a side and help yourself back up to a nice, easy seat. And bring our hands to our heart and turn our gaze to the heart, to your own good heart and your bright spirit. And take a moment to thank and honor yourself for your practice today. And we thank and honor each other for sharing this time. Namaste.